your level of confidence going into the start of school for schools all across the state? Well, you know, schools are opening up in different phases, so uh, I'm confident that uh, with the protocols in place, students can have a successful year and ultimately a safe year, not only students, but, but staff as well. They were telling me here, uh, uh, here in um uh, here in Meriden, they have 30 to 40 percent of their kids have chosen to stay home uh, and, and, and learn remotely rather than come to school. Does that surprise you, the numbers that high? It doesn't surprise me. Uh, I think, you know, we said from the beginning families are going to have a uh, choice and, and they're exercising their choice. I know many families want to see how it starts and then they want to make a decision to allow their students to come in uh, later in the year. But it doesn't surprise me. It, it's, uh, it's their choice. You know, the, the CEA, the largest teachers union, came out uh, this week and said, we think there should be another two-week delay. We just don't think schools are ready. What's your response to that? You know, and we've been working closely with CEA and AFT, regular, meeting regularly to, to hear those concerns um, and address those concerns in specific areas. Uh, there are districts that have taken a, a two-week uh, pause to make sure that they're ready, and we encourage districts to open when they're ready. So I don't think a universal... Uh, we had one district come out and say, we don't want to wait any longer. We need to get our kids back in. So we do allow districts to make that decision, and some have made the decision to move back two weeks. So the Hartford branch of the NAACP sent a letter to Leslie Torres uh, Rodriguez and said, uh, we don't think you're ready to reopen. Uh, and they're very worried because the black community has been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 all along. Uh, what precautions are being taken to make sure that the, that the black community in, in particular is being protected? Sure. So the mitigation strategies that we have are, are universal, you know, the mask, uh, facial covering, um, and, and many of the other ones. I think the key thing here is communication. What are we doing to ensure a safe environment for students, all students? In particular, black and brown people are affected. I mean, the data clearly shows that it's disproportionately affecting black and brown communities. So the key thing is making sure we're communicating how those uh, precautionary steps are being taken with the community so that fe people feel comfortable walking into schools. Yeah, so clearly you understand when the, when the, when the parents in the black and brown communities are saying, hey, we're, we're particularly nervous. You understand that? As a Latino, as a father, I get it. Uh, but I also know that um, I have to mitigate against some of the effects of uh, not participating in school for my own children. And, you know, a parent has to have the right to choose. And as we said earlier, uh, many parents have chosen to keep their children home until they're comfortable. But we're going to continue to communicate the safety precautions in place and adjust as we need to to make sure that the experience is a positive one. Can you think of anything that the school districts could do to ensure the safety of kids that they haven't done? You know, I, they're really working hard. These d districts, teachers, th they're working hard. I think just continuing to communicate in different ways, um, sharing with them what, what the protocols are. Once people see what they're doing in the classroom, they'll feel a little bit more comfortable and continue that dialogue. It's not just a one-time thing. Throughout the year, we have to continue to communicate.